A mostly smooth election day nationwide was marred in multiple battleground states Tuesday by a series of bomb threats and baseless claims of wrongdoing by former President Donald Trump. The bomb threats in parts of Arizona, Georgia and Pennsylvania turned out to be hoaxes, but forced evacuations and some polling places to extend hours. The threats were reported throughout the day at polling locations in three metro Atlanta counties, all with large numbers of Democratic voters, and into the evening at voting locations in Pennsylvania, forcing evacuations. Bomb threats also were reported at three voting locations in Navajo County, Arizona, according to the Secretary of State's office. In an evening news conference, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro acknowledged there had been multiple bomb threats called into voting locations across the state, but said thus far there is no credible threat to the public. Every legal, eligible vote will be counted and counted accurately, and the will of the people in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be respected," said Shapiro, a Democrat. In Chester County, Pennsylvania an emailed bomb threat lead local officials to clear the one of the buildings while it was checked by explosive detection dogs. Officials report nothing had been found and reopened the building, extending opening hours for another two hours. In a statement, the Pennsylvania State Police said they were working with local partners to respond, if needed. Neither Shapiro nor police gave more details about who might be behind the bomb threats or why Shapiro believed there was no threat to the public. As Election Day voting neared its end, the former president began making unsubstantiated claims about voting and law enforcement in the biggest cities in Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Good evening, everyone. We've also been made aware that in the course of the last hour, multiple bomb threats have been called into polling locations and municipal buildings across Pennsylvania. My team and I have been in direct communication with Pennsylvania State Police Colonel Christopher Paris, who is coordinating with local and federal law enforcement as well as Pima. State and local law enforcement, along with the FBI, are investigating these threats, and thus far there is no credible threat to the public. As the votes are counted, I urge everyone to be patient, to avoid spreading or repeating any myths or disinformation, and to rely on trusted sources of election information, like the Department of State's Election Returns website. Every legal eligible vote will be counted and counted accurately, and the will of the people here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be respected. The building is safe and secure. We work the Chester County Detectives, local law enforcement, um, provide some assistance to secure the building. We also contacted the FBI immediately. Um, we've been in coordination with the FBI about this threat. I can tell everyone that this appears to be overseas in origin. I'll defer to the FBI's statement about where it is, but I know they're working off an idea that some of the IP addresses are coming from Russia. And what is clear from all the recent news reports and information from the FBI is that this is part of a persistent, coordinated attempt to call in bomb threats to swing states in order to disrupt the election. And we prepared here in Chester County for something like this. We deployed all of our resources just like we planned. And I'm happy to say that the building is safe the threat appears to be dubious, and we are functioning as if, just like we planned. We are very grateful. We are now back in the building. We did not lose much time, and um, mail-in ballots are being counted. There's really no delay because that's in a different building. So we are set up to start collecting the vote tallies at the GSC, and everything is running smoothly. The allegations about massive cheating in Philadelphia are absolutely false. There is no evidence whatsoever of massive cheating. We worked closely with the RNC and everyone across Philadelphia any time that they had a complaint about anything. We handled it in real time. And if anybody has evidence of widespread cheating, please send it in because we'd like to see it. And I guarantee you there won't be any. There were a number of bomb threats called in. There were a number of bomb threats called in. 
So we're working uh, closely with our law enforcement officers, and you know we'll get we'll be we'll publicize that as you know because again it's an ongoing investigation, so you don't want to upset the investigation. Well, phone locations were extended, and we know that every Philadelphian that was eligible was was able to vote. Again, it was a smooth day. It was a beautiful day. We're not going to let uh, misinformation, disinformation, a few uh, people who trying to, you know, throw some rain on our beautiful picnic. It was a smooth day. It was a great day. And uh, again, we'd like to thank poll workers and thank our bipartisan and nonpartisan staff. Voters in Atlanta headed to the polls Tuesday to cast their ballots for the next president of the United States. Beyond the presidential race, Georgia's most competitive elections this year are in a handful of the state's 180 state house districts. Democrats are trying to reduce the Republicans' current 102 to 78 majority in the lower chamber of the General Assembly. The hardest fought districts include six stretching across northern Atlanta suburbs in Fulton and Gwinnett counties. Each party is trying to wrest away three districts held by the other. Democrats have campaigned on overturning Georgia's current abortion restrictions, doing more to limit guns, and expanding the Medicaid program to more low-income adults. Republicans have touted their support for low taxes, police and school vouchers. Well, I think he's a better candidate. I don't, I did, if I'm going to a lawyer or a doctor or a physician for assistance, the last thing I care about is their personality, their religion, or their attitude. I need brain surgery, I want a good brain surgeon. I need a lawyer, I'm going to court, I want the best one I can get. Well, I'm supporting Kamala Harris. And uh, what brought me to the poll today is I think my vote counts. And I cannot allow that man to get into office. It I want a more independent candidate. And the reason being is because I think that there's too much control in the government. And I would rather have a more independent that gives more freedom. She presented all of the answers to my questions in life and in country, and she's a, she was a very good vice president. You're right, yeah, it was just one of those like weird, yeah, y'all have, y'all both live on Fifth Street. And the fact that Joe Biden chose her to be vice president is good enough for me. Here and the other and, and it's, yeah, and I'm like, listen, I'm sorry.